jetzt freut es mich unendlich und umso mehr, dass dieser Mensch, ich habe es gerade angesprochen, das Europäische Parlament, er ist Ihnen sicher bekannt, wenn Sie ihn namentlich vielleicht noch nicht kennen. Sie kennen sicher die eine oder andere Rede von ihm. Er ist einer, der von Anfang an auch im Europäischen Parlament nicht leise war. Er hat Gesicht gezeigt, er hat die Statements on point gebracht. Diese Rede werden Sie jetzt auf Englisch hören. Wer Kopfhörer mit hat, könnte sich über die Webpage in den Livestream einwählen und dort live eine deutsche Übersetzung von dem, was wir jetzt hier hören, hören können. Aber sonst schauen Sie sich den Livestream einfach im Replay zu Hause an, wenn Sie nicht Englisch sprechen. Diese Message ist stark, diese Message wird gut werden. Ich bin geehrt und freue mich riesig, hier mit uns auf der Bühne, Member of European Parliament aus Rumänien, Christian Teres. Hello Vienna, and hello Austria, I see many Hungarians back there, hello Hungary, Germany, Luxembourg and nevertheless hello Romania, we've been told in the past three years that we should respect the so-called European values. And the so-called European values, if we respect them, they should unite us more than we were before. So what we saw happening, starting with three, four years ago, all these alleged European values were imposed on us to actually violate our basic fundamental rights and freedoms. Yeah. We saw, exactly, so we saw, starting with 2020, different politicians all across Europe imposing their ideology, not their political views, on us. And you guys from Austria, you fell at the hard way. Because the current chancellor, Nehammer, imposed many rules on you. Yeah. So he imposed many rules on you to violate your basic fundamental rights. But look where we are today on October 1st, 2023. We are in Vienna with people from all across Europe. So despite the fact that they try to violate our basic fundamental rights, us as people, we were able to unite and fight for the common goal. And the common goal is freedom and liberty, right? Yeah! Walking, walking among this great crowd today, I met people obviously from Romania, but also from Hungary. And I asked them, when did you come to Austria? And some of them told me, well, we escaped communism 35, 40, 45 years ago, even 50 years ago. And those people are among us today. And I told them, why did you come to this protest today? You know what they told me? They don't want to have it repeated. Exactly. Yeah. They don't want to live in another communist society. They don't want to live in another tyranny. Exactly. So this is the reason why we are here today. We all fight for the same reason. To be free, to be independent, to decide what to do with our own bodies. If you want to be vaccinated, be vaccinated. I don't have a problem with it. The problem that I have is when elected or even worse unelected people are forcing us to be vaccinated with medical products that were not properly tested before yes so right. fucking true the problem that i have is when these bureaucrats especially these as we call them eurocrats 
tens of thousands of people working in Brussels in Strasbourg, waking up every day, thinking what rules and what regulations and what European directives they can pass, not to be better for us, but how to be better for them and worse for us. And we saw that happening in the past three years. So that situation has and must change. Yeah. In 2024, in the month of June, we will have Euro parliamentarian elections. Each one of you, regardless if you are from Austria, from Germany, from Luxembourg, from Romania or from Hungary, you'll have the option to choose and to vote for those members of the European Parliament who must or should protect and respect you. So let me ask you something straight to your face. The people that you elected in 2019, have they respected your rights? No! Have they fought for you? No! Do you want to change that? Yeah! Exactly. So in 2024, in 2024, you have the option. Because until now, they had the options. You have the options and the right to send in the European Parliament patriots, strong people, people who respect you, people who are willing to take the risks of defending your national sovereignty and individual freedom. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for, that it's up to you. My only call to all of you is to make sure that you identify those people and those parties that are willing to fight for you and that proved that they fought for you. We love so, you. Yeah, I love you too. I love you too, man. So in 2024, the option is very simple. Freedom versus tyranny. Liberty versus oppression. National sovereignty versus European bureaucracy. That's the, the choice that we have to make in 2024. I met here a parent who came with two minor kids. One of them was so small that barely could walk. And I asked them, why did you come today to this protest? And that father said, I don't want my kids to witness and to leave the kind of hard and dark times that we lived in the past three years. So if that father is fighting for his kids, there are many other mothers, grandmothers, granddaughters fighting here exactly for the same reason. We have to do the same. And that fight begins now. So I would like to take this opportunity and thank the organizers for doing an outstanding job because look, I'm coming from Romania. I was born and raised under communism. We used to listen under communism to what was back then Radio Free Europe. And we were listening to, to that radio station on the dark. We were afraid that someone is gonna catch us and, 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 and throw us in jail because it was a crime to even listen to freedom, not to even exercise it. But look what happened in the past three years. Someone said before me, one of the previous speakers, about the Digital Service Act. This is straight from the Orwellian books. They want to create the Minister of Truth. And Ursula von der Leyen, I call her Ursula von der Leyen. No! Uh, so Ursula von der Leyen, maybe along in your case with Nehammer or with others, you know. Fucking Ushi. Yes, even worse. Timmermans from Netherlands and so on and so forth, you know, Schultz from Germany. All these people, instead of looking at the actual European values, 
that were all based on freedom, liberty. They are looking for some reason to all the tyrants. They want to repeat all the mistakes of the history here in Europe. And we must not allow that to happen again. The fact, the fact that you guys came here today to this wonderful protest rally, peaceful, I have to say, I was at many rallies all across Europe, 2020, 2021, 2022. I mean, this is peaceful. But I was in Amsterdam, for example. I was in Brussels, where they sent police with on horses on us. For what? We did not even ask. This is the interesting thing. And maybe for you guys from Western Europe, you don't realize that. Us in the East, we fought for freedom and liberty. We had people who died in 1989. But in Western Europe, it's the first time now in the past two years when you see demonstrations all across Europe for people demanding freedom and liberty. This did not happen in decades. So the job that we have, the call that we have to implement is to defend this freedom. And we don't do this for us only, but for the generations that are coming after us. So I would like to thank all of you for being here today, for bringing other people to these protests, and let these protests not be the last one until the Europarliamentarian Euro elections. And keep in mind, united we stand, united we fight, and united we win. Freedom! Freedom! Wow, ich habe Gänsehaut, Ihnen geht es wahrscheinlich ja. ähnlich, gell? Ja. Um, der Philipp Kruse da vorne vor der Bühne und ich, wir hatten das große Glück, am 4. Juli in Brüssel im EU-Parlament zu sein mit Christian Teres, Mislav Kolakosic, Christine Andersen, Ivan Sincic, Madame um, de Gingeron und wir waren wieder dort am 13. September, aber diesmal im EU-Parlament in Straßburg und mich haben Kollegen vom äh, Christian Teres motiviert. Ich werde fraktionslos ohne politische Partei im Nacken versuchen, bei den nächsten EU-Wahlen ins EU-Parlament zu kommen, weil nichts würde mir mehr gefallen, als mit diesen Herrschaften Pressekonferenzen zu machen. Und selbst wenn ich da nicht ins EU-Parlament komme, und das geht es nicht, werde ich und werden der Philipp Große, viele Anwälte, viele Ärzte immer wieder Daten, Fakten, Zahlen, Studien diesen mutigen Herrschaften für ihre Pressekonferenzen die nötigen Informationen liefern, damit wir gemeinsam stark sind und Ursula von der Leyen, die Lügnerin, auch entsprechend zur Strecke bringen, all along. Ja, ja. Ja, ja.